Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to do another Inkscape tutorial. Uh, actually, a little bit simpler one this time. Uh, basically, what I need to do today is uh, whip up a tripod mount for a camera slider I'm working on. So I figured I would uh, share that because again, a big thing that I'm doing on this channel is I, I want to share the concepts of designing a product, you know, going all the way from design to fabrication. And, and so I think it's important again to share these various pieces, especially how do you take an idea, work with that idea on a canvas, I, in this case Inkscape, and, and come up with something. So. The first thing we're going to do is we need a circle. Now this is going to, what we want to do is we want to take a maker rail, a 10, 10 millimeter uh, square maker rail and attach it to a tripod. Now this is going to have motors and all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be a fairly heavy weight item. Uh, so we, we need a lot of surface area. And actually what I'm going to be using is one of the tripods from my medium format camera. And with that, basically, uh, we have uh, the the mounting platform for this. It's still a, usually it's, it's usually in larger cameras like that. It's a three eighths inch um, attachment, but this case it's still a quarter. It's kind of a long story. It's the older um, medium format, uh, so it uses a quarter, but it has a 73 uh, millimeter round base to it that the that the that the quarter inch quarter 20 comes out of so so it, it would be about this size so this is the size of the base that we have and then in the center it would be a quarter 20 uh, inch bolt coming out of this now what we want to do is we want to provide a lot of positive surface area so even though we're gonna, just going to have two bolts uh, connecting it to number eight bolts we want to give it a lot of surface here so what I've decided in this case to do is to actually kick this circle out from 73 so I'm going to I'm going to add 10 10 millimeters to it um, which should give me five on each side to be proud actually I might go a little bit more so instead of 73 I think I'm going to go 85 and so I'm just going to kind of keep this aesthetically round um, and also, I, I've, I've kind of kicked around doing a couple different things. I've thought about putting flanges on here and things like that, but I think, I think doing it this way, I can optimize my material use. And that's one of the things that, you know, you want to think of, especially if you're going to commercialize a product, is your material use. So this way I can fit more pieces on there. And I'm actually going to show some, some ways to optimize the material. Uh, in, in, at the end of this uh, to make better use. So anyways, back to this. So we've now got our 85 uh, by 85 um, surface here that we're going to cut out. Now what we need to do is I'm going to just for grins and giggles put in a couple uh, lines just to make it easier to deal with on some of the things. Um, Guidelines always make life so much easier. So we we have we have a couple guidelines in, and now what we need to do is we're going to use a couple number eight um, uh, bolts. The number eight nuts fit nicely into the 10 millimeter slides. So what we're going to do is we're going to now whoops, I'm going to take this and draw um, a circle. Now the I'm going to make this opening. Um, the number eight bolt's a little shy of four millimeters, so to give it a little bit of breathing room, I'm going to make this four uh, millimeters in diameter. And where did it go? Okay, so the other thing I want to do is go back to my stroke, make that 0.5. Uh, I want to make that point. It's in pixels. Make sure I change it to millimeters and go 0.5. And so we have that. And so uh, uh, let's see. I want to make sure. Let's make sure we got all of our units correct because I 
for some reason it jumped back to points from, from millimeters and that's why it was so small all right that looks a little bit better um, so we're going to move this guy down here and what I'm going to do let's see um, I want to just double check the diameter of the head here so so the head is about 0.75 millimeters in diameter so um, what I want to do is I want to set this off by about five five millimeters from the side so if I'm I'm seven total my radius is going to be what about 3.7 so if I'm at five then it'll still be on the surface area of of this um, circle so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to do a little bit of a square and I'm going to select this I'm at millimeters width I'm going to say is going to be five and I've showed this in another video again I work in a number of applications <coughs> excuse me and one of the things I find is it's easier to sort of cheat and use other structures as my measuring tools especially if I'm I'm not you know you know trying to do something with with a high level of precision so basically if I center my hole on this I have um, you know so my center should be at 5 my overlap should be about 3.7 and so I should just be short of the edge of this circle a little bit at being five I want to just um, let's zoom in and just make sure so let's uh, be a little bit more clean about this uh, so we got that centered and then let's just uh, that looks pretty well centered and so because uh, for grins and giggles let's just do another circle and let's do um, 7.5 to emulate the the actual head of the bolt and then we can just to see for sure how this is going to go 7.5 and we now have that and so again we put this on here and we line this up and we do alt arrow to get a finite movement and you can see here now that our um, let's use stroke paint so we'll just change the color so you can see here so you can see how this is going to fit on here so we're a little bit short of the with the head will come a little bit short and, and so we're okay with this and so I think we're we're pretty good so let's zoom back out a little bit and then you know, one of the things that I do want to mention with this is, you know, one of the great things uh, about, you know, utilizing some sort of CAD software, design software, is to be able to see how things fit. Now, I'm doing this rather quickly. Um, however, in the, the real world, the commercial world, I mean, th this is really imperative. I've worked in the past in, in you know, um, the automotive space with 3D design and that kind of stuff. And, and that's one of the things designers and engineers uh, really have to pay attention to is the collision of parts and the accessibility and, and those kind of things. So uh, as you're d going through the design process, you know, feel free to kind of test your idea a little bit like, um, you know, while I kind of thought that, that I would have room here, um, you know the question is is this enough room uh, you know I think I think for this it is because um, uh, I want to I want to keep uh, outside of here because the other thing we could do is we could we could play this up even more is let's do uh, let's do this because let's let's emulate the actual tripod head itself because as you recall I said this was 73 uh, millime millimeters and so I'm going to do 73 so now this is the tripod head over top of my surface so, so the outer blue is um, so actually it's probably good I did this because I've just I've just noticed a little bit of a problem which I could actually cheat with it but uh, might get me in the long run see my head actually the head of this bolt actually collides with the edge of the um, 
um, tripod head. Now th this is foam technically for this little bit of a corner and since it's it's tapered you know we'll probably press down in the foam but again by doing this test I've now shown that I've, I've got a problem so the easiest way for me to kind of solve this problem is is probably actually bumping this up let's see let's just say I bump this up to 90 and from 85 so let's go 5 millimeters I, I'm, I'm trying to avoid getting this too big um, because I don't want it too big because then it kind of becomes a little bit of a waste. Uh, but I do want to, I would do want to make sure I've, I've got that support. So then basically what I'm going to do is, is my two, whoops. Um, uh, I could, guess I could probably zoom in on it. Uh, let's, let's actually do that. Let's zoom in. And so we can see a little bit better what's happening here. Um, let's center that back on that line. Let's move this guy back over to be centered here. And then let's move our simulated head back over. And uh, moving out to that, it just kind of nix it so I should have I should have enough room I'm actually going to stick with 90 because I don't want to make it well you know what I'm gonna lie here so I am going to go up to I'm going to kick this up to um, 92 just just so I got enough clearance I don't have to do this a second time so let's go up to 92 I want to I want to pull back out to make sure I've got my everything squared up just keeping to my grid lines or my guidelines sorry not grid lines and uh, let's just see I'm still on it there and so let's make this larger and and again I know some of this to some might be a little bit boring and I'm really not trying to teach the use of Inkscape here but what I'm trying to do is teach teach some ideas of design and simulation about you know because one of the big focuses I want to do with this channel is really share with folks how do you get an idea from conception to reality um, you know, because that's one of the things when I became interested in 3D printers, one of the things I noticed is very few people actually design their own parts. A lot of them go to Thingiverse and just spend, you know, hours and days just printing out things on Thingiverse, and they sort of miss the whole point of, you know, design, being able to create their own product, bring it into reality, and, and to me, that's the real power behind this. So this this is really what you know these series is are meant to do is, is how do you create something so we're all pretty good here so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna also copy I'm gonna take this let's move this over to here and then let's just do copy paste of that and let's move this over to here and we don't need the, the bolt head over there anymore so Let's do. Let's go back to this side and just make sure we're all good over here. That we have things pretty much lined up, and um, I think we do here. We're pretty good here. All right. So let's now put our thing in place, and so we get our additional. We get our number eight bolt hole, which this will attach to the maker rail. If I haven't explained that already, um, there'll be a nut in the slot of the maker rail and that, that will hold all this to that. And we'll also give it quite a bit of surface area. One of the things that, that I want to do with this is um, share the surface area uh, with both the tripod and the maker rail. So as much surface area as I can transfer, um, the better off I'll be. So again, we see we're, we're, we're clear of the tripod head, so we're all good. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this head. Uh, I don't need the tripod piece anymore. And then let's go out. And then what I want to do is I want to select this. And then I want to select this. And I want to do, whoops, object. And nope, 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 path. Sorry. 
Uh, I don't want to do difference and so I cut that hole out and then I want to select this one select this do path again uh, difference now I could probably did this now now a couple pieces with this actually since I'm going to render this as a BMP and um, I'll eventually do an episode of why I do that uh, versus I know some people I've take I, I've, I've rendered these as EPSs and things like that into laser corral and that kind of stuff what I found that works better for me anyway uh, because laser corral for some reason on my machine tends to be a little bit odd is I render these as, as PNGs outside of um, Inkscape and then I convert them to BMPs and rescale them in or I shouldn't say rescale them but ensure they're scaled correctly inside laser draws BMPs and then cut them out and, and I find I get I get a better product than I do if I try to do um, laser corral I, I, I've tried uninstalling it reinstalling it and, and to be honest eventually I might just scrap that board and go with just wrote you know wrote G code or you know uh, you know gerbil controller etc I've done a couple other machines that way but anyways for right now um, this is what I'm doing but but just just for semantics did I do did I do the difference um, because you know, doing this as as a graphic or a ra rasterized graphic wouldn't matter if I cut those out or not. Um, but just for semantics, it's cleaner. Anyways, uh, enough with that ramble. So we have to. What we're going to have to do here now is I'm going to back out of this a little bit. Um, is I'm going to need. This is going to have what I should probably explain, explain at the beginning, since this is three millimeter millimeter material. The the nut is about that's going to go in here. That's going to attach to the tripod is about a little short of six millimeters. It's actually five point seven, um, and the sheets are actually a hair short of three anyway. So what it's what this is actually going to do is be a, a compilation of three. Um, parts so there are going to be two parts which act as a shim to house the quarter inch nut and then there's going to be uh, a retaining layer at the bottom and I'll show that in a minute but the, the, the piece is, is what I want to do is I want to um, first first create uh, um, actually what I'm going to do I've changed my mind a little bit I am going to uh, replicate this because this would probably be just easier. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Control C, Control V. All right, so I'm going to have this guy. I'm going to put this guy up here, um, centered on. Whoops, going back and forth between a Mac and a PC sometimes gets a little confusing on what keys to hit. So again, I'm going to set this one up here, and then I'm going to do uh, one final one here. So we're going to have three, three, um, so here's our three layers, actually. And then what I'm going to do is... So for the first one, I am going to, we have to put in, so we have to go up here. We're going to have to make a hex object. So we're going to, uh, we're going to select this. So regular polygon, six corners, and we're just going to insert it here. So nothing big. Uh, and then what we're going to do is, why is that funky like that? I don't want it rounded. Um, sometimes I don't know why this thing does what it does, especially since I just, oh, so you can do that. All right. I get it. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. I guess it's probably easier to do it this way. Um, would be easier if it, you could just tell it, but I mean, I'm sure you probably can if you just find where you want to tell it. So we're going to do this now. Always when working with a hex object, hex objects can be a little bit of a headache. So, um, eh, not really a headache. So one of the things, notice that the 
and, and there's a reason I did it in this orientation is you you want to have control of your orientation because this is the width and this is the height now a hex object while one might think it's circular because you can draw a circle around it and the point should touch the idea is is that doesn't quite happen that way um, so the width for example the width of a quarter inch uh, 20 nut is about 11 millimeters that's going to leave us a little extra room and then basically the height is going to be greater it's going to be about 12.5 and um, let's now change uh, stroke and let's keep this at 0.5 all right so you kind of see and let's let's zoom in on this so you can kind of see what's so we now have this um, this uh, hexagon and, and notice that it's it re, it's retained its shape so technically again I could draw a circle around this and it really should touch the the points but it, it's it's not as wide as it is tall and for some reason it's decided to change it a little bit here I'm not sure why Inkscape quite does that but it does so I want to go back to uh, I think it's trying to keep it in some form of scale um, yeah I guess that'll work um, so anyways you know because at least my natural you know instinct was to make these equal to treat this like a circle and it's not a circle long story short so uh, with that explained uh, let's let's do an align function so uh, we're going to align it so we're now in the center of the object and then what we're going to do is so we keep perspective here is we're going to copy this guy um, because you can see there's a slight little tilt I don't want to get overly anal on it it doesn't matter just but but see we have these holes so the holes from this to this have to line up so we need to keep these the same so again what we'll do is we'll just transfer this down here and then we'll use the same align function and since this this circle or this base is the same as this base this uh, this hex is the same as the hex up there then we're we're all good so um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this and then do a path and do path difference and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do a path difference and then now I have just have to create my base so I'm going to create another uh, circle and um, let's let's zoom in now the circle is where the 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 tripod bolt is going to pass through um, this piece of acrylic so basically what I need to do is um, the the diameter uh, is, is right around six six millimeters of a, of a quarter 20 bolt so I'm going to make this I'm gonna give it a little bit of room I'm gonna make this 6.5 um, you know because there's more than enough to hold the nut there so I'd rather give it a little bit of extra room then then not enough room so there's there's our piece uh, one of the things I want to do is go back here and for some reason today it keeps wanting to change back sometimes it just stays on millimeters but that's another good good piece is always make sure that you understand what dimensions you're working in and whether you're working in uh, ID or OD um, two and working on an object so again we have this so we just use you know gotta love the um, alignment tools so now we're we're aligned there and um, again we'll go to path the difference and now everything is set up so we now have all of our um, objects and we can cut these out now a um, couple things so I want to optimize this for uh, cutting so I talked a little bit about material optimization in 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 the, at the start of this and now this is what I want to show you so so now I've got 
I've got these parts here and I like to keep a little bit of separation so let's do this and, and let's uh, yep I want to line to the top and then I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to put him down here and just to do this and we're aligned whoops I don't know why we did that but apparently we did so let's just put him back we'll just go back um okay so we got we got some reasonable separation i want to give these guys a little bit more separation but what I want to do is optimize my material too, because the, the pieces, or piece, the thing. So, so, for example, in this area here, am I ever going to be able to really reuse that effectively? No. So, what about this space effectively? No. And, and so, one of the things I want to do is think ahead in my product development. And so, one of the pieces that I do need is I need to create some shims for the maker wheels so basically that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to create um, some of those shims and then what we're going to do is we're going to place them in those dead areas to make use uh, better use of the material uh, once we um, start cutting it so uh, instead of wasting it uh, we can make extra use and this is key for commercial endeavor I can't tell you how important that this this piece is minimizing waste is is critical in developing a commercial enterprise now you may say all right this plastics cheap and, and you know so your times probably more valuable than spending it doing this and it, that, that could be true for you know a personal endeavor however if you're going to commercialize it and you're going to make many many of these that cost adds up exponentially fast so and it'll surprise you so with that being said basically what what I need to do is I need to create an 8.2 uh, outer OD for my uh, shims that I need for maker wheels and this is probably good just to if you if you're going to use maker wheels and you know etc uh, to know uh, I just want to go back to see what the point four point two five I'm going to try these at point two five and see had a little bit of a problem yesterday and some of the lines at point two five some of them printed some of them didn't point five it did so I'm going to live a little bit dangerously here so now I'm going to also copy this over now my my that was my OD so my ID here is going to be five five millimeters so I'm going to switch this to five um, and this will be my ID so five millimeters and then so I'm going to drop this guy into here and we don't have to be perfect and I'm going to make this 0.25 again and then what I'm going to do is I'm through the magic of line I'm going to line this guy and look at that that's that's so beautiful it's not even funny and then I'm going to go to path difference and then I'm going to cut out the circle and now what I have is I have um, I now have a shim that's sized to um, my maker wheel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now technically for my slide I've got I got four wheels and in and, and I'm roughly three and I need a separation of six so that means I need two per wheel so I need about eight of these guys and so what I might actually do is is make up a little bit more than eight of these guys just for um, grins and giggles um, but you see how I'm filling in the space with these and so um, whoops don't want to do that uh, I want to spin this out um, so let's take these three and then let's copy them up here you don't want to get them too close to the edge
Uh, let's see. And I usually like to, even though it's not a big thing, I do like to line these up. It just makes the tool path run a little bit nicer, the laser run a little bit nicer if things are, are working in straight lines. So, um, um, so I've got, what, five, six, seven. So basically I just need a couple more. Uh, let's do just a handful more. I like to, in case something doesn't come out, have a few extra to run because this, this is sort of another little tip. Um, always do a few extra, uh, especially if things like this, if something doesn't fully cut, blah 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 the time you'll save not setting up for another job run just by having printed a few extra and, and, and basically we're, we're pretty much using waste material uh, for this so you know why not print out a few extra and, and you could use them for another project and again you want to make the most of of your material that you can so and that's what I'm really trying to do here is just really make the most and minimize my waste uh, if I could think of something else to actually throw in here I would even do that you know because this space over here is big enough to be reasonably usable I can actually flip the um, the, the piece over and, and cut something out of this but again these corner pieces and this piece it, you know by the time you try to line it up you misalign it it, it doesn't cut out correctly you you wasted a lot of time um, you know it's just simply not worth it so um, you know the idea is is you know why not pick up you know and recover as much waste as possible now yeah it might might make your machine time run a little bit longer but hey I mean a laser is actually pretty fast um, especially compared to CNC that this this will probably all be cut out within 15 minutes um, if that even so um, you know three millimeter material millimeter material so Anyways, we now have our object and we can export this and then ba basically what I typically do is I highlight the objects uh, such and then I go to export PNG images and then I use export selection and then you'll notice that, that it has the size and width and then I can set the, the path where it's going to export it to and for some reason it's decided to change it this morning everything has decided to change itself um, and then you know one of the things I have is, is set set landing pads for this um, T mount and if I get rid of the seven so now I've saved that and now I have a PNG of this um, because of the the color difference um, laser draw does not seem to like PNGs too well so basically what I do is I go I then go into um, I start a paint shop pro and this takes a, actually a minute to load um, and then I bring it I bring it into paint shop pro there's probably other ways to do this also kind of one half dozen of the other um, So basically, because I think you can also, uh, you know, export some other rasterized graphics from uh, Inkscape, but um, uh, I can never find the stuff. Tube holder slider. Did I not call that T mount? Let's go back. Oh. Uh, I have to push the export but th this is the one thing this this gets confusing although this allows you to set up everything export as you still have to hit this button down here it drives me nuts I always forget it and I go and I do what I just did is I look for it and it's like not there all right now we see we have the mount we say okay we, we see them now you notice that the lines here so we're going to now um, say save as and then you know we see BMP Windows OS 2 format and I'm just gonna save it to the same name well actually I'm going to 
um, changes to BMP because when you go into laser draw sometimes it gets a little confusing and so I'm gonna say save whoops I screwed up the mount that's that's okay you get the idea um, and so we bring this one back in and well let's close this and now notice that there's the white background versus the clear or, or transparent uh, alpha channel um, in the PNG. So now what we'll do is we'll import this into laser draw and cut these out. Now one of the important things to kind of keep in mind is, is image size over here. Oops, I, I did I did a boo boo. Sorry, I'm gonna have to go back and and so. Um, magic number 167 so I, I found a kind of a long story short using 167 DPI is the magic number so I'm going to replace this um, to get the, to get an accurate scaling so now I've got to go back and, and redo this um, but it kind of a good catch so you can kind of see so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna re-import this open uh, and then do basically the same save copy as BMP and then I'm going to save this just over save it so then save yes replace it yes format and then I'm going to do close and then I'm just going to open it again to show you how that worked and boom so the the scaling over here the the DPI's so this is the size of my cutting area so when I import it into uh, laser draw I'm going to want to um, make sure that that I have this type well I need to go back here uh, I need to make sure that I have this this is because this is showing pixels um, all right, here's here's what we need. 190, basically 190 by 190 is needs to be my um, size in laser draw of my object to maintain proportion with what I just created. Uh, so it's important. So again, I found if I use 167, and I've done this um, through a combination of trial and trial and error in math so I, I did it at 90 I measured the scale difference divided that out remultiplied and so that multiplication told me I needed to be at 167 DPI for accurate um, an accurate rendering size wise going from basically vector to raster uh, again you could do this in in um, Corel, Corel laser. I, I just have not had good luck with Corel laser to be honest. Um, so for some reason uh, the way it handles it even though it's the same driver and interface uh, doesn't work very well. Some of the some of the lines it doesn't seem to respect the millimeters per second. If anybody out there knows why that is let me know uh, because I can put in six millimeters per second and for some reason then it decides it wants to run at 160 millimeters per second under the cutting and when it does a circle it wants to do two millimeters. I don't know there's just really no rhyme or reason to it. So anyways um, Outside of that rambling, hopefully this helped to really share with you how to go from uh, inception of an idea, how to optimize material, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we also do a video on the outcome of this too, so you can kind of see in, in reality how this all worked out uh, and how it all goes together. So, Because again, the idea of this is to really share how do you take an idea and make that idea real. And we're kind of doing this in bits and pieces, so it, it's not... Uh, too much to digest at one time so anyways if this helped you out hey please hit like below subscribe to the channel a lot more of these coming is I basically do these pieces I'm going to share them because I think it's just kind of like a good you know you can fast forward it you can get some ideas of, of different things or you know you can just get past it and get to the end if you want so anyways cheers and see you